In the year 1954, Oto Murakami, a Japanese lieutenant in the JSDF, and his best friend Kentaro are leading a tank battalion deep into the heart of Tokyo during Godzilla's first attack on Tokyo. Upon encountering Godzilla, Ota orders all the tanks in the battalion to open fire on him, but their attack merely alerts the giant monster to their presence, and he quickly destroys all of the tanks with his atomic breath, save for Ota's, which has its radio antenna broken. Kentaro fixes the radio, and the two get word that Godzilla is heading for a massive group of civilians trying to evacuate. Springing into action, Oda and Kentaro manage to catch up with Godzilla moments before he reaches the evacuees and distract him with a shot to the face. Godzilla proceeds to give chase to the tank throughout the city, and he eventually falls victim to an artillery strike. However, that too also proves futile as Godzilla quickly recovers from the attack and gives chase to the tank yet again. With the tank's engine almost broken, Kentaro manages to veer it into a canal as Godzilla marches away into the sea. Ota gets a broken arm and is sent to a hospital. He then breaks out a few days later and watches with Ken as Godzilla is killed by the oxygen destroyer. A few months later, Ota and Kentaro are given an order by a Colonel Schooler to hunt down Godzilla, who is seemingly alive and is wrecking chaos across the Pacific. Ota accepts, and so does Kentaro. It's been 13 years since Godzilla first made landfall at Japan and Ota Murakami's first encounter with the King of Monsters. Ota is now a seasoned veteran of the AMF, an international organization dedicated to eradicating Godzilla. Godzilla has mysteriously swung from his usual territory in the northwestern Pacific and is headed straight towards Indochina, where the Vietnam War is already in full swing. The AMF, blocked from entering the peninsula through North Vietnam, is forced to stop Godzilla north of Saigon. In an AMF's makeshift command post, an American general, Carson, working with the AMF, Carson plans to lead Godzilla into a mind bog where he hopes that Godzilla will be stuck long enough until a flight of B-52 Super Fortress bombers drop their loads of bombs on the monster. Colonel Schooler tries to tell Carson the futility of such an attack, but is ignored by Carson, who is arrogant enough to claim that there isn't a creature that walks this earth that can survive what we're about to unleash on that valley. Meanwhile, a battery of Mazer cannons is set on a hilltop by the EDF's eccentric Doc Randall, who claims that the said Mazer cannons can blast through a half mile of solid granite. Kentaro is sent with Randall to operate the Mazer batteries. Schooler then has a discussion with Oda on why Godzilla would switch his territory so quickly. Oda can't think of anything, but guesses that Godzilla is chasing something. Acting on a hunch, Schooler leaves the command post via helicopter and leaves Oda in charge. Soon enough, Godzilla arrives and gets distracted by several tanks and helicopters and soon enough, bumbles into mines that several engineers had placed two days prior. He then comes into Mazer cannon range, and they open fire. However, the action is soon cut short when Viet Cong soldiers scramble out of a spider hole, and the hilltop where the Mazer batteries is on turns out to be Angiris, who is awakening. Most of the Mazer batteries are lost. Meanwhile, Godzilla notices Angiris, and the two engage in a fight. The fight drags on for a while until Angiris flees. This gives Ken and Randall the opportunity they need to hit Godzilla with the remaining Mazers. Unfortunately, the bombers that Carson had ordered earlier arrive and drop their payloads, obscuring the view for the Mazers and ruining the best possible chance for the AMF to defeat Godzilla. Then. As Oda laments over the situation, Godzilla suddenly turns for the sea. Meanwhile, Schooler is revealed to have found the reason of Godzilla's mysterious course change. A psionic transmitter. It's the year 1975. Since the AMF's chance encounter with Angiris in 1967, 
more giant monsters have started to appear. Rodan, Mothra, Megalon, Kamunga, Hedora, and Ebera. To counter these new threats, the AMF has expanded its ranks to include more anti-monster teams, one for each monster. Now, all of the world's monsters, including Godzilla, have all mysteriously converged at Akragana and are causing massive damage to the city. Ota, Ken, Schooler, and the AMF's anti-monster teams have assembled at a half-destroyed hotel. Schooler notices that the power station across the city is mysteriously active. A decision is made to investigate it. Everyone gets into the van of one of the Mothra Strike Team's members, and a wild chase ensues across the city, with the driver skillfully avoiding being trampled by the fighting monsters. Unfortunately, before making it to the power station, the van crashes straight through Hedora, and the van barely makes it to the station. The AMF makes its way through the bowels of the station, and knocks out two armed guards. They soon eavesdrop on the mastermind of the entire monster attack on the city, rogue AMF scientist Dr. Deverich, who created the psionic transmitter and is currently putting a newer version, the one that summoned the monsters, up for auction. Oda and the rest of the AMF burst in and try to arrest the man, but the mad scientist activates a master control switch that summons all the monsters to attack the power station. Deverich escapes, and the AMF managed to get out, save for Schooler, who is pinned by debris. Oda tries to get his commanding officer out, but he refuses his help and gets crushed by more falling debris as Godzilla and the other monsters run over the station, killing him. Oda screams in anger and collapses as the monsters continue their battle in the city. Twelve years have passed since the AMF's fateful day in Accra and the death of Colonel Schooler. The old Monster Hunter teams have since been disbanded, and the AMF's now aging ex-Monster Hunters have become, in Oda's words, glorified weather watchers, keeping close tabs on the world's monsters. Now, Godzilla is rampaging in Bombay, India, and Oda, along with Kentaro, are keeping a close eye on him. Then, two military transports drop a giant container in the city, revealing the latest weapon in the AMF's arsenal, a mechanical version of Godzilla, aptly dubbed Mecha Godzilla. As Oda exits his van for a brief smoking session, and as Godzilla and his new adversary duke it out, he notices Dr. Deverich walking calmly throughout the general carnage and chaos of the city. Ota radios Kentaro for backup and shadows Deverich and follows him to a warehouse. There, Deverich discusses a deal with two suited men, presumably buyers for his psionic transmitter. The two men remain silent and leave. Ota takes the advantage and tackles Deverich to the ground as the scientist shows him the newly modified psionic transmitter, which is approximately a thousand times more potent than its predecessor, according to Deverich. Then, as Ken and two AMF soldiers arrive, the transmitter activates itself automatically and summons Space Godzilla. Space Godzilla begins battling with Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla, quickly rendering Mecha Godzilla inoperative and Godzilla at his mercy. Ota and Kentaro run to the ruined hulk of Mecha Godzilla while the duel between Godzilla and Space Godzilla rages on. Ota manages to rescue Mecha Godzilla's pilot and reactivates its weapons and blasts a giant crystal Space Godzilla used to arrive in and gains his power from causing it to topple on the monster. Godzilla takes advantage of this and fires his atomic breath at his clone, killing him. As Godzilla roars in victory, King Ghidorah and Gigan are seen traveling towards Earth, having picked up on Deverich's signal. It has now been a full 48 years since Oda Murakami first clashed with the King of Monsters. Now, he, Kentaro, and the last of the AMF are faced with their biggest challenge yet, the two space monsters, King Ghidorah and Gigan. 
In the year 2001, King Ghidorah and Gigan, having picked up on Dr. Deverich's signal from his psionic transmitter, have laid waste to half the world. In a final gamble, with the fate of the world in the balance, the AMF authorizes the use of an experimental black hole cannon, the Dimension Tide, and their latest Mechagodzilla, Kiru. Oda and Kentaro are present at the final operation, taking place in Antarctica. The duo then visit Kiryu's pilot, Takeshi, and knock him out. Since the duo have a plan to have Oda pilot Kiryu instead of Takeshi. Soon after this, Godzilla arrives and Kiryu is activated. Godzilla battles King Ghidorah and Guy again, but being outmatched, falls quickly. However, he is saved by Kiryu, and to an extent, Oda and the two work together and fight the two aliens to a standstill. However, the Dimension Tide activates and the two aliens are sucked in at once. However, Godzilla stubbornly refuses to go in. Oda, via Kiru, tries to push Godzilla in, but the King of Monsters proves to be far too stubborn and roars in defiance. As Kiru takes heavy damage from the Dimension Tide, Oda nonchalantly laments on Godzilla's defiance and quietly pushes the Monster King with Kiru, smiling as he does so. Oda and Kiru are sucked in as the black hole collapses on itself. Meanwhile, the AMF forces break into celebration except for Kentaro, having lost Oda, his lifelong best friend in the battle. He then finds a journal Oda had kept with him during his years fighting Godzilla. Out in the sea, where the battle between Godzilla, Kiryu, King Ghidorah, and Gigan fought, Godzilla's dorsal plates break the surface, implying that Godzilla has survived.